This week, Earth has experienced a series of cataclysms that have left their mark worldwide. There have been so many disasters that it's impossible to fit them all into one video. Today, we will focus on the most serious events that occurred in Europe. Italy. A red alert level was declared on the island of Sicily, Italy, due to the simultaneous eruption of two volcanoes, Etna and Stromboli. Mount Etna had been showing increasing activity over the past three weeks. On July 4th, a powerful eruption occurred with lava fountains and a volcanic ash cloud about five kilometers high. In the province of Catania, ash-covered roads, sidewalks, cars, and the runway of the local airport, leading to the cancellation of at least 90 flights. In the city, cycling and motorcycling were banned for two days, and the speed limit for all vehicles was reduced to 30 kilometers per H. Simultaneously with Etna, the Stromboli volcano also became active releasing a stream of lava that rapidly flowed into the sea down the mountain slope. Summer in Sicily is becoming unbearable for many. Last year, severe wildfires forced tourists to evacuate or cancel their trips. And this summer, in addition to the volcanic activity, the island is suffering from drought and water shortages. South Korea South Korea, record heavy rains have been recorded, leading to the deaths of four people, with one more person missing. About 1,600 people were evacuated. In the city of Gunsan, more than 10% of the region's average annual rainfall fell in just one hour. This was the highest amount of rain in one hour in the country's history. In the city of Wanju, rescuers evacuated residents of a village who were waiting for help on the roofs of their houses. One elderly man was barely saved as he clung to a pole for a long time. In the city of Busan, floods partially suspended railway transportation, and flights at Gimhae Airport were cancelled or delayed. China Experts note that tornadoes in the Chinese province of Shandong are extremely rare, averaging one and a half per year. But in just two days in early July, at least three destructive tornadoes hit the province. As a result, at least 83 people were injured and five died. The whirlwind swept through, breaking trees, tearing off roofs, and tossing cars. More than 2,800 houses, 48 power lines, and over 24,000 hectares of farmland were damaged. On July 5th, a dam break at Dongting Lake in Hunan province caused a massive flood. Water rushed onto fields and villages, flooding houses up to their roofs. Nearly 6,000 people were forced to evacuate. Japan. Japan is experiencing dangerous heat. More than half of the country's prefectures received heat stroke warnings. On July 7th, the temperature in Shizuoka reached 40 degrees Celsius, setting a record since the beginning of meteorological statistics. In hundreds of other locations, the thermometer rose to 35 degrees Celsius and above. In recent years, mortality from heat in Japan has increased sixfold. On July 8th, at least 435 people aged 2 to 102 were hospitalized with suspected heat stroke. In total, more than 6,800 people were admitted to medical facilities with this diagnosis in the first week of July. Turkey. 
Due to heavy rains, the Turkish Meteorological Service issued one warning after another this week. Water flooded buildings and roads, damaging city infrastructure as well as agricultural lands. The province of Ordu was particularly affected. On July 7th, 186.7 mm of rainfall was recorded in the Ikiche district in one day. Water overflowed riverbanks and rushed into the streets, sweeping away cars and bridges. At least two people became victims of the disaster. After heavy rains, landslides occurred in many areas. One of the landslides blocked the Unye Ikizhe Highway. India. Many states in India continue to struggle with floods amid extreme rains. On July 9th, a red alert was declared in the cities of Mumbai and Pune due to tides and heavy downpours. Before the morning rush hour, more than half of the monthly rainfall norm fell on Mumbai, a city of 12 million people in just six hours. Suburban passenger trains, critical for millions of people, were stopped due to flooded railway lines. At the city's airport, 36 flights were canceled and hundreds were delayed due to poor visibility. In the state of Assam, storms, floods and landslides have already killed 92 people. Nearly 2.3 million residents were forced to leave their homes, and the total number of affected people reached 24.5 million. Huge damage was inflicted on agriculture, with over 68,000 hectares of arable land flooded. The flood not only destroyed roads, bridges and houses in thousands of villages across the state, but also caused serious damage to Kaziranga National Park. The flood killed 114 wild animals, one of the highest mortality rates in the park's history. In the state of Uttarakhand, a landslide occurred on the national highway. Thousands of passengers were stranded on both sides of the road. In the city of Almora, a powerful stream of water destroyed a bridge, and now residents have to cross the strong river current, risking their lives to get to work or school. In the city of Pilibit, Uttar Pradesh, heavy rain continued for a day, turning many villages into islands. Rivers and streams swelled so much that culverts under the railway tracks were washed away by the strong water flow, leaving the rails hanging in the air. Due to the disaster, seven people died in the state. <laughs> USA The record-breaking hurricane barrel, after devastating the Caribbean countries, crossed the Gulf of Mexico and struck the coast of Texas in the USA. Very powerful. Barrel caused the deaths of at least 12 people. The hurricane brought torrential rains and strong winds. Roads turned into raging rivers. Power lines were downed, and most hotels and buildings along the coast had their roofs damaged. There were instances where huge trees, falling, split houses in half. In Brazoria County, peak wind gusts reached 156 kilometers per H. In the Houston area, the wind damaged the retractable roof of the local stadium and overturned several tractor trailers. Storm surges and heavy rains caused flooding. In some parts of Houston, 213 mm of rain fell, which is comparable to the average rainfall for the entire summer. Hurricane Barrel left more than 2.7 million homes without electricity. Restoring power could take several days or weeks. The situation is exacerbated by the unbearable heat and humidity that are raging in the state these days. On July 8th, it was so hot in New York that the Harlem River drawbridge got stuck in the open position due to overheating and expansion of its steel structures. 
fireboats were spraying water on the bridge to cool it down. The inoperative bridge caused major traffic jams during the evening rush hour. Record heat continues to scorch the western USA. 14 weather stations set new historical temperature records. On July 6th, a group of motorcyclists suffered severe heat stroke after riding through Death Valley National Park. On that day, the air temperature reached 53.3 degrees Celsius. Due to the record temperature, emergency medical helicopters were unable to reach the victims. Unfortunately, one person died. Unbelievably, despite the deadly heat in the USA, tourists continue to flock to Death Valley. Storms and tornadoes. Powerful storms have hit European countries. For several days, thunderstorms, heavy rains, strong winds, hail, and even tornadoes raged. In Slovakia, one of the country's largest outdoor music festivals was interrupted by a powerful storm. The strong wind destroyed the stage structure. At the time, several hundred people were nearby. Rescuers had to search for the injured using service dogs and thermal imaging cameras. 29 people were injured. Tents and food and drink kiosks were also damaged. In Western Slovakia, the storm left 135,000 households without electricity. In the south of the country, railway lines were damaged. International trains bound for Budapest and Prague were rerouted. In Germany, almost a third of the country was seriously affected by the storm. Basements and streets were flooded, and fallen trees obstructed traffic. In the city of Kalu, hail damaged house roofs, and a fallen tree knocked over a child. In the upper Swabia region, several houses were damaged by lightning strikes. In the city of Telta, a tornado-like phenomenon caused serious damage to an industrial area. In the city of Nordhorn, heavy rains flooded a local clinic, forcing the emergency department to close quickly. A nursing home in southern Lower Saxony was damaged by the wind. On the same day, 190,000 lightning strikes were recorded in Austria. At the lakes in the federal state of Carinthia, Emergency services had to rescue swimmers and surfers who couldn't reach the shore due to strong waves. In Tyrol, some roads were closed due to landslides. At Vienna Airport, around 40 flights were cancelled due to weather conditions. In the Rhine Valley near Lake Constance, extreme rains poured 30 liters of water per square meter in just a few minutes. Hail devastated over 5,000 hectares of land. An Austrian insurance company estimated the damage at approximately 1.2 million euros. In Switzerland, the canton of Ticino experienced strong winds of up to 106 kilometers per h. In the municipality of Cadenazzo, nearly 50 mm of rain fell in 20 minutes. Boat docks were destroyed. The storm and hail damaged greenhouses and devastated fields. On July 13th, destructive storms hit Slovenia. Huge hailstones damaged at least 350 buildings, many vehicles and solar power stations. Residents of Belarus also suffered from powerful storms. As a result of the raging elements, six people, including two children, died and 15 people were injured. Belhydromet declared the highest red level of danger. Eyewitnesses from different regions reported that the storms lasted only a few minutes. Despite this, the consequences were catastrophic. Winds of up to 30 m per s broke massive trees like matchsticks and uprooted them. More than 2,000 hectares of forest were felled. 
Falling trees caused multiple power line breaks and pole damage, leaving 2,000 settlements in the country without power. By the morning of July 15th, 1,200 of them were still without electricity. The storm damaged many homes and buildings. There were long delays in long-distance train services, and commuter trains were cancelled. In the Brest region, large hail fell, with some hailstones reaching 7 centimeters in diameter. The storm hit a children's camp near the city of Rechaitsa during an outdoor event. The weather changed rapidly, and rain poured down in torrents. A falling tree killed one child and injured six others. On July 13th, several tornadoes destroyed villages in northern Lithuania. Local residents are still recovering from the horrific experience. A woman and her children barely managed to hide in a gazebo while the tornado destroyed their home in a matter of seconds. They sustained minor injuries from broken glass and furniture thrown around by the whirlwind. Meteorologist Gaidis Valaika expressed that this tornado was one of the most powerful in Lithuania's history. Preliminary estimates suggest that its wind speed reached 60 to 70 m per s, corresponding to an F2 category. On the same day, in neighboring Latvia near the town of Olein, a tornado swept over a solar panel park, destroying it and lifting panel debris high into the air. A day earlier, a thunderstorm with hail and torrents of rain hit the Bauska region, with wind gusts reaching 31 m per s. The strong wind tore the roof off the Bauska stadium and hurled it onto nearby buildings. Nearly 9,000 consumers in the central part of the country were left without power. Extreme heat and fires. Extreme heat has gripped Eastern and Southeastern Europe, breaking hundreds of records. Most countries have declared a red level of danger due to the high temperatures. Unbearable heat has settled over Ukraine, with temperatures reaching 40 to 41 degrees Celsius, approaching the all-time highs in the country's history. The record heat arrived a month earlier than usual, with daily average temperatures exceeding the norm by 6 to 10 degrees Celsius. In cities, the heat felt even more intense, with people sharing photos showing air temperatures on thermometers at 50 degrees Celsius and above. The heat created problems for drivers. In cars parked in the sun, temperatures reached up to 75 degrees Celsius, dashboards began to melt, and some people lost consciousness while driving. In Hungary, authorities issued a heat warning across the entire country, with air temperatures exceeding average levels from recent years by nearly 10 degrees. In Serbia, the widespread use of air conditioners caused electricity consumption to reach levels typical of winter cold snaps. In southern Romania, Cooling air in homes has become a luxury due to frequent power outages. High temperatures caused cables and other small equipment in electrical panels to melt. The asphalt temperature reached 69 degrees. Train speeds were reduced across the railway network by an average of 20 to 30 kilometers per age compared to normal, as rail temperatures exceeded a dangerous 50 degrees. People across the country suffered from the heat on trains, in carriages, surface temperatures reached 37 degrees Celsius, and the high humidity and overcrowding only added to the discomfort. Open windows didn't help, and some passengers were forced to ride on the steps with open doors. Even in air-conditioned trains, the systems couldn't handle the extreme heat. Low rainfall and drought led to water being supplied on schedule for only a few hours a day in at least six counties in Romania. In Albania, suffocating heat saw air temperatures in the shade reaching 42 degrees. 
the government requested help from the European Union to combat large-scale forest fires. The situation is most challenging in mountainous areas, where firefighters are unable to extinguish fires due to a lack of specialized equipment. The wildfire situation in the country is so critical that penalties for intentional or accidental arson have been increased to up to 15 years in prison. Southern Russia has been engulfed in extreme heat. For the first time in history, summer peak electricity consumption has surpassed winter levels. The scorching sun is destroying crops, drying up plants and causing wildfires. On July 14th, a fire broke out near the city of Novorossiysk. Due to strong winds, the flames quickly spread to the Utrish Nature Reserve and nearby resorts. Hundreds of people were urgently evacuated. 62 hectares of protected forest were burned. Significant resources were deployed to fight the fire. Three helicopters, one airplane, 84 units of equipment, and more than 300 specialists. New daily heat records were set in the Krasnodar region on July 16th, with temperatures rising above 39 degrees Celsius. In some localities, heat records are being broken for several days in a row. In the city of Rostov-on-Don, the heat caused fish to die off in the Seversky Reservoir. Extreme temperatures are threatening vegetable crops. Farmers are warning that there might be a shortage of vegetables in the next two to three months. Due to the unbearable heat, Agricultural work is being done at night when temperatures are slightly lower. In Bulgaria, more than 200 fires are raging due to the abnormal heat. In the municipality of Svilingrad, the fire has become the strongest in recent decades, burning over 40,000 hectares of farmland and forests. The fires have come very close to populated areas, with 13 houses and several cars already burned. The situation is very tense due to strong winds that constantly change direction, contributing to the rapid and chaotic spread of the fire. In Greece, the abnormal heat is exacerbated by drought, fires and water shortages. In some sections of the railway from the city of Patras to the Peloponnese Peninsula, the rails have melted, traffic has been suspended and repairs can only begin after temperatures drop. On the island of Naxos, the largest reservoir has dried up. Due to the water shortage, the authorities of Karpathos have imposed restrictions on filling swimming pools, and on the island of Thassos, there are plans to build a desalination plant. 